Our New Testament reading is from the book of Ephesians, as Paul writes in the fifth chapter. He invites us to live in the light of Christ. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not associate with them, for at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to, dis to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Look carefully, then, how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making a melody to the Lord with all your heart, giving thanks always for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we turn our attention to those words of our Lord from Ephesians chapter 5, beginning at verse 6, but especially today we want to look at verses 15 through 17. Is that the section that, we've been, that we are entering today began long ago? Is that all the way at the beginning of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1, is that we hear the very invitation that God has invited us to walk, to walk in a path that is worthy of the calling that He has given to us. See, we have been through all of the promises, all of the gifts, all of the things that God has promised to us in those opening chapters of Ephesians, of a blessing that knows no bounds, about a grace that knows no bottom, is that there is a promise and a hope, a forgiveness that extends so far into our life that it invites forward in us a joy a joy that bubbles up in a joyful response of all that God has given to us. Paul began all the way back in Ephesians 2 proclaiming that it is by grace that we are saved, that not by any work of you. But he goes on to say, but you are Christ's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, that you might walk in them. See, again and again through Paul's letter to the Ephesians, Paul invites us to a walk with Christ, a walk with Him through all things, a walk of faith, a walk of very care. Paul does not urge us to run. Paul does not urge us to simply sit back and relax because all's been done. No, what does he invite us to? that we might walk with Christ. So how would you say your life compares to this invitation? Does your life always feel like just a nice walk with Jesus? Or do you feel that rush, that hurry? Do you feel that very thing, that there are many things that demand your time or many things that are there? How is your pace going in this walk. For Paul calls us to this Christian walk. He does not call us to a holy hurry, nor does he call us to a Christian hustle, that I know that that sounds an awful lot like the Super Bowl shuffle, which brings very fond memories from my childhood. But Paul does not call us to those very things of a scamper or a scurry or a sprint or a rush or a dash, he simply invites us, let us ever walk with Jesus. So how would you say that your pace is going in the midst of this? I mean, after all, how did David put it in that famous Psalm 23, that the Lord is my shepherd, 
that he leads me beside still waters. He leads me in paths of righteousness, even for his name's sake, that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I do not fear. Why? Because you, Lord, are with me. Too often I think that we're out there scurrying ahead of Jesus or somehow lazily lounging somewhere back behind Jesus. That our pace of life pulls us this way and that. And what is it that Paul invites us today? Not that we might run out ahead of him or simply just enjoy some peace on the couch. He invites you to do that, to Sabbath but he invites you to walk with him. Today in Ephesians 5, 15, he says to us, look carefully then how you walk. Do you look carefully how you walk? (laughs) Is that something that's just kind of your normal sense of things? I don't know, it seems just one of those things that's an invitation that just begins to ask how careful do I need to be? For that word, look, carries that idea of precision, of accuracy. It's one that is that very call to carefulness that is there. So that I couldn't help as I read and thought about this is that an experience that I had a number of summers ago with my family. Is that there we found ourselves on a southwest vacation and on that particular day, We found ourselves at the Grand Canyon looking out to all of the grandeur that lay before us. That we had taken a couple of hikes, we had done a couple of things, we saw all of the different outlooks and overlooks and everything else, and we said we didn't want to go into the canyon, it was too late and too hot. So as we looked at the hiking map, we looked and we saw the Rim Trail. It's paved. I like that. (laughs) Is that an elevation change? Very little. I said, how hard could it be? Is that what started at probably a six to eight foot paved path with a nice brick border, a brick boundary between you and the canyon, suddenly as you began to go further on, all of a sudden you had overgrowth coming in from the side, and that paved path began to be about four feet wide and was more gravel than pavements. Had a nice little slant about like this, and what was, once was about four feet distance between you and the edge was now probably about four inches. As this father, who I'm afraid of heights, Suddenly, I became very aware of how carefully you plan your steps and how thoughtfully you are guiding your family along because right on that other side of that four inches with that path sliding toward it was a very long drop, but don't worry, there's a very fast stop at the end. (laughs) You think about the fact that your steps must be very carefully placed. That this is not a meandering, a willy-nilly looking around as you walk, that there is a planning, an intentionality of how you are walking and where you are going. And would you say that that describes your pace with Jesus? Do you think that that describes your walk with him, not just here within this very place? Maybe you have a very established place that you have not only your service that you attend and your seat that you sit in, (laughs) and you are here faithfully each week, but what about your pace and your walk with him as he leads you out there into this world? Do we enter into life with that kind of planning, that kind of intentionality, that kind of thought? What does Paul say immediately before this? He says, wake up! (laughs) Awake, O sleeper! Open your eyes! Arise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. That how many 
are simply walking sleepily through life without recognizing that there is one who desires to walk with you, to bring his grace and his promises into the midst of those places of fear, that he would bring his care and his comfort into those places of shame or guilt or sorrow, that there is one who desires to walk with you. And he invites us today to wake up to see that too often we have lazily been sleepwalking without that very attention. Because he says to us not only to look carefully where you then how you walk, not as unwise but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. Can you tell the time? Now, I know that there's many out there that are just like, yes, pastor, I know how to read an analog clock. But Paul he uses here not simply that word of time of chronos, that time of simply what time is it, that how quickly do those seconds and those days pass by. But he uses that word of that Kairos time, that important opportune season, that a Kairos is the special time that is adapted for a certain thing, the season for something to happen, hence it's an opportunity. That Christian wisdom makes the most of the opportunities, that the seasons may come and they are brief, they soon slip by, that one must recognize them and take advantage of them, that there is one season that the farmer has for planting, and there is only one season that he has to bring in and harvest his very crops. But how are you seeing the time that is there? What season of life are you in? What season of change might you find yourself in? What opportunities is God giving to you? Is he blessing you with in the midst of those very things? I mean, it's one of those things like sand through an hourglass. These No, so that's just a bad joke. But we know how quickly our life passes by. Our days are limited, our time is short, and we must use our time wisely. Or as Paul says to us today, not simply that we might use it well, that we might somehow all run out today and get planners. No, that's not what Paul desires. Now, what does Paul desire but that we might see the very things with eyes of faith to seize the opportunities that are there? Because our translation says that you may use the best use of your time, but Paul puts it in this way, that he says that very thing that you might buy it out. What does that mean? That you might buy it out, that you purchase all that it has to offer, that you may pay the necessary price in effort or exertion so that you might seize that opportunity that God has given you today. Now, what does he call us to? He calls us to wisdom. He calls us to faith, to see the very things that are there. Too often, I think that we are simply waiting or hoping that somehow that opportunity might finally come, or worse, not only do we hope or wait for something that may not come, but simply there are ways that we can miss what we did not see. But when we are hurrying, when we are rushing, when our pace is not one that walks with Him, that we will miss it, and it will, how would Paul put it? It will cost us. Paul invites us to buy it, to seize it. That he doesn't sugarcoat it. He says that the very need is this, to use the best use of our time for the days are evil. 
And we live in times of trouble, times of distress. We live in times where there are temptations and struggles and problems like there have not been in other generations. And we live in a world that has that, sim, that, that illusion of privacy, that illusion of somehow that what we do in the secrets of our house or in the secrets of our time alone remain secret, that there are many ways in which we still walk in the darkness rather than the light that our Lord has shown upon us, that we live in a time of staggering stats and statistics of those who are walking not just away from the church, but those who have walked away from Christ. Do we recognize the time in which we live? And do we walk with that carefulness? Or are we walking on the very edge and we simply say, ah, whatever. How bad can it get? What does Paul invite us to today? That he invites us to see that we are not living on neutral ground. But our Lord invites us to come and to walk with him, that God has given you a gift. He has given you that gift of time, and how now do we use it? Too often we feel like our time is not our own. It's something that so many people are grabbing or grasping at. It's something that is fought over. It is something that we struggle with. Where do we begin to buy in to the very things that he has granted? That he has given us a gift. How then do we see it? Paul invites us today to recognize the times in which we live. As Paul has put it in other places, is that time is that very funny thing. That as Galatians chapter 4 proclaims it, but when the fullness of time had come, that God sent forth his son born of a woman born under the law to redeem those under the law. Or as he put it in Romans chapter 5, that while we were still sinners, while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. As Paul has already put it at the beginning of our letter today, that what is it that God has given, but in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace, that he has lavished it upon us in all wisdom and insight, making us to know the mystery of his will, that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time. Does God have a plan for you? Does God know your days and your times? Yes. And he is the one who has bought in fully that he might redeem you. Christ Jesus came at just the right time, in just the right moment, in just the right season, that salvation might be won and that salvation might go out. That Jesus paid the price to make you his own. That he sold out everything to make you the one that he does not simply have for a moment, or a passing lifetime, but that he might spend all eternity in celebration of you, that very one that he has created, that he has redeemed, that he has claimed as his own. So that in whatever situation we find ourselves, no matter, no matter how good or how bad the moment may be, what does Paul speak to us today? that in all circumstances, in all times, that we might give thanks to our Lord Jesus Christ. That what do we have to give thanks for? That we have thanks to give for one who walked to the cross for us. 
One who went that hard and difficult path that paid for our debt, paid for our lives, that we might have all time with him. That today we stop and we reflect. That am I running? Am I rushing? Am I hurrying? Or even worse, maybe am I simply just lounging on the couch, simply just happily, well, I don't have any need to walk What does our Lord invite us to today but that we might buy in with the time that we have? That he has invested fully in us to make us his own priceless possession. He did not hold back. He did not hesitate. He did not wait. He went headlong for you. So may he grant to you this day and every day that peace of God that surpasses all understanding, that guards your hearts and your minds in Christ as you walk with him in all things. Amen.